Howdy folks, hope you're all having a good weekend, and welcome back to Warhammer 40,000 Chaos Gate Demon Hunters, where unless something's gone horribly, horribly wrong, I'm publishing this from my hotel room in London, where I'm currently attending MCM London Comic Con. Meanwhile, in the grim darkness of the far future, where there is only war, war never changes, it's just another day, another chaos incursion that needs to be stomped down by my brother marines of the Grey Knights chapter, for we are the Emperor's will made flesh. And you lucky, lucky people, or at least those of you who haven't already started playing this game and are maybe thinking about having a go, you're going to be learning an awful lot in today's video. Unfortunately, what you're going to be learning is what not to do. <laughs> but hey, it's still going to be educational. Yeah. Those of you who are veterans of my XCOM 2 video series are probably intimately aware that I tend to have something of a reputation for kind of stumbling my way through to victory through brute force and ignorance rather than anything that actually resembles skill or tactical awareness. And while the first couple of Chaos Gate videos might have fooled some of you into thinking that, oh, it looks like old man Jingles has finally figured out what he's doing. Um, yeah, today's video is going to shatter those illusions. This mission was very much a learning curve for me. And there are lessons here that I really should have picked up in the first couple of missions, but it took... It took today's video for me to finally get my head around certain key concepts. Anyway, it's time to kick the tyres and light the fires, and hopefully... Those of you who are thinking of having a go at this game will learn from the benefit of my misadventures. Why is it we detect these seeds so often in the ruins of our great ecclesiarchy? It is the Plague Lord mocking us, Purifier. He mocks the edifice of our Imperium. This bloom is only one of countless jibes. We will undo every one of his jests, brothers. The seeds lay ahead. Extract or destroy them. So, in this mission, there are going to be two seed carriers, one there and one there. The seeds that they are carrying need to either be extracted, or I can simply kill the seed carriers. Obviously, extracting them would be better, because seeds are a vital component in the research that Waifu Inquisitor Vakir is conducting on our behalf. And I think it's safe to say that I was feeling pretty confident when I started this mission, because the previous missions haven't been complete disasters, despite running into overwhelming numbers of enemies on the previous mission, and the mission before that I managed to complete without taking a single point of damage in any of my marines. So I was thinking, I'd heard this game was hard, this ain't nothing. <laughs> this game is hard. I think it's safe to say that the base difficulty is definitely harder than XCOM 2. And while the two games are very, very similar, I quickly ended up getting myself into trouble by trying to play Chaos Gate like XCOM 2. Because XCOM 2 rewards caution and careful play. Never end a turn in the open. Always end your move in cover. Because a soldier in XCOM 2 caught out in the open is usually very quickly a dead soldier, or at the very least a critically wounded one. Despite the obvious parallel that the XCOM games are all about defending Earth from alien domination, they're still a more realistic game than Chaos Gate. But that's fine, because Chaos Gate never pretended to be a realistic game in the first place. These aren't US Marines, these are Space Marines. A sucking chest wound... <laughs> would put a US Marine flat on his back. But to a Space Marine, a sucking chest wound is just a suggestion that they might want to slow down a bit. Chaos Gate rewards violently aggressive play in a way that would just get your entire squad slaughtered in XCOM 2. At the same time, you can't just rush in blindly. You may be Space Marines, but you're not immortals. So you have to temper that aggression with a little bit of common sense. Space Marines in Chaos Gate are a bit like battleship players in World of Warships. You can absorb a ton of damage, but if you just try to charge in ahead of the rest of your team alone, you're going to die, just the same as anybody else. But properly supported, you can take, and dish out, ridiculous amounts of damage. Right, this patrol seems to have worked its way around to my rear. Ooh, uh, misses. 
Let's see what we can see. There they are. Oh, a plague marine. My first plague marine. <laughs> One plague marine and a couple of cultists. You wouldn't think that would be too bad. And it shouldn't be too bad. But I'm still going to manage to screw this up. You'll note that the Plague Marine has three points of armor. Or in other words, three more points of armor in his Chaos Power Armor than my Power Armor Marines have. In fact, it's one more point of armor than my Marines and Terminator armor have. Which hardly seems fair, but, well, I don't know, special Chaos Mutation Toughness or something, whatever. Here's where I figured out something very important about hard cover. It works both ways. Purgator Thul is in hard cover from the Chaos Marine, so the Chaos Marine cannot shoot him. But that means that the Chaos Marine is also in hard cover from Purgator Thul, so Purgator Thul cannot shoot him, which is a bit of a bummer. In fact, I've managed to move Purgator Thul into a position that is in such good cover that he can't shoot anybody, but he can lob a grenade over it. So since that's all I can do, we're going to uh, give the good news to those two cultists over there on the staircase. The more observant amongst you may have noticed that while Purgator Fool did do some damage to those two cultists, the blast from the grenade also managed to blow away all of the hard cover that was preventing those cultists from returning fire at him. Oops. I did say that carefully planned aggression is rewarded in this game, but this is not carefully planned aggression. I'm using Justicar Iolanthus' hammer hand ability to guarantee a crit, which opens up all kinds of additional attacks. And I'm going to go for the armor pierce, which is going to completely bypass the Plague Marine's three points of armor and deal damage directly to him. What I should probably have done, because this has just left him standing in the middle of a whole bunch of enemies and it hasn't killed the Chaos Marine, is try to keep everybody in hard cover from the Chaos Marine, just try to manage the damage that he can do to us while we finish off his much, much more squishy and vulnerable associates. And then overwhelm the Chaos Marine and try to finish him all off with a whole bunch of coordinated attacks in the same turn. Because that's what it takes to kill those fellas. This Scourge ability from Apothecary Harm would be a very good ability to use on him because it bypasses armor completely and inflicts a bleed. What it does not do is any damage up front. So trying to use it on those injured cultists, they will die from it, just not now. If I'd hit the Chaos Marine with the bleed and then just kept him crowd controlled and used the direct attacks against the cultists because the cultists don't have armor and they would have died to these kind of storm bolter attacks, whereas all I've done is expend some willpower for no real good reason to buff that storm bolter shot with a side bolt, which has increased the warp meter and hasn't actually done any damage to the Chaos Marine. All it's done is strip his armor off. So at this point, since I'm committing to attacking the Chaos Marine, I should be committing to attacking the Chaos Marine, because now he's got no armor. Don't forget, armor regenerates every turn. So I'm basically expending all of this time, effort, ammunition and willpower points, dividing all of my efforts amongst all of these enemies without actually killing any of them. And now I'm struggling to finish this Chaos Marine off. The only thing I can do now is try to hit him with a grenade, but that still won't kill him. And this is my last action for this turn. So we've knocked the Chaos Marine over. He's still alive. And now it's his turn, and the first thing he does is recover all of his armor points. And he's straight back up to three armor again. And then he heals himself. <laughs> and all of the other guys that I didn't kill now get to return fire. So, 
Apothecary Harm's bleed attack is the only thing that's actually done anything useful here. I may as well have not bothered with everything else. Aside from that, the only real thing I've achieved is to have just a car on Ilanthus take some damage, be pinned, therefore losing an action point, and be covered by Overwatch while standing in the blast radius of a time bomb. I moved the new boy, Purgator Tor, up to a position where he might what actually be able will. to shoot at the Chaos Marine, but in the process I've used all three of his action points so he can't actually do anything when he gets there. And Purgator Fool, at the back there, is also covered by Overwatch, which means the only person who's capable of doing anything here is Apothecary Han, and his Stormbolter is not going to be enough to kill the Chaos Cultist, so I'm forced to use my second precious grenade, which is also not actually going to kill that cultist, but will be enough to knock him off his feet, break the overwatch, and give just a on Olympus and Purgator Fool the potential to at least do something. Now, because just a car Iolanthus was pinned, he only has two action points here, so I use the first one to kill the cultist, and the second one I must use to move him out of the blast radius of that time bomb. I dabbled with the idea of moving him over to that second cultist, which would probably have actually been the best thing to do, because it would have given him cover from everybody else, and a reaction attack against the cultist didn't try to do anything. Instead, I just move him a couple of paces to the left, which looks as if I've moved him into partial cover, but the partial cover that he's sheltering behind is in the blast radius of the time bomb, and when it goes off, it's going to remove the partial cover. With the warp meter at 80%, I dabble with the idea of expending some willpower to also not kill that cultist, which would have been a terrible idea because it would guarantee a warp surge in the next turn. And then, just when I'm feeling proud of myself for not expending psychic powers unnecessarily and advancing the warp meter guaranteeing a warp surge in the next turn, instead of using Purgator Fool's two remaining action points to just shoot that guy and kill him, <laughs> go ahead and expend psychic powers unnecessarily, still fail to kill him, but advance the warp meter to 85%, guaranteeing a warp surge in the next turn. The time bomb goes off, removes just Car Iolanthus's cover, Apothecary Han takes a couple of bolter shots from the Plague Marine, who immediately sets up Overwatch again, although he does take some bleed damage, but he's still got all of his armor back. The cultist on the high ground then covers them all with suppressive fire, Note that I have three marines right next to each other. And the final cultist, a Purgator Fool failed to kill, one arm with a grenade launcher, manages to get all three of them with a grenade, and then reloads before he dies from Apothecary Han's bleed effect, as another patrol is on the way in, and another patrol is on the way in, and now all three of these guys are overwatched, suppressed, and pinned. And then the warp surge that I triggered through reckless, wasteful, and completely unnecessary use of psychic abilities hits, and wouldn't you guess, reinforcements coming in behind us in one turn. Fantastic. On the one hand, you could look at this as a prime example of the really pretty damn good AI here in Chaos Gate, and that's really just a generous way of looking at it, because this situation is entirely my own fault. I do need to kill this guy and get rid of that suppressive fire. So since the warp meter's back down to 0%, I'll expend some psychic power here to free these guys from the overwatch. Now, just a car Iolanthus. I can't move him forward to get the Plague Marine in a melee attack, because then I'll run into his overwatch, but I can at least shoot him from here. And I'm going to buff the damage with a Cybolt. No which appears to have stunned him, which means this is basically going to be an automatic kill. Yep, blew his head clean off. So, I mean, that was a complete mess from start to finish. There's no way that should have taken as long as it did, but they are at least now all dead. Everybody has reloaded, everybody's recovered their armor, those of us who are wearing Terminator armor anyway, and we can now set up and get ready for the reinforcements which were triggered in the last warp surge. And here they come. Now the kind of reinforcements that you get through these reinforcement warp portals are usually not too dangerous, but you can get some nasty surprises, and indeed I've got another Chaos Marine. <laughs> Great. Well, I was able to get Purgator Tor, yeah that's really his name, <laughs> and Apothecary Han set up at the back here ready to give these guys the good news. 
And the weapon that the Purgator is using, it's called the Silencer. Yeah, I know, stupid name. And it's got that nice burst area of effect, attack ability, the scattershot thing. But what it doesn't have is the ability to lay down Overwatch, which would have been very, very useful here. So instead, I'm just going to go ahead and shoot up the third Poxwalker, or lesser Poxwalker. So I suppose three kills for three action points isn't bad. But now I've got the problem of dealing with this Plague Marine. Ideally, I'd like to shoot him from behind cover, or at the very least, set up Overwatch on him, but he's really dug in like a tick on a dog's back over there, and Apothecary Harm has to go to him. But the only thing that his melee attack is going to do is chew through his armour and not kill him. Remember, any troops with armour points recover their armour points at the beginning of their turn. Fortunately, Justicar Iolanthus does have enough action points to get to him and hit him with his hammer hand ability, which remember is a guaranteed crit. And guaranteed crits open up options. I am at least smart enough to remember not to go for the armour piercing attack, because Apothecary Han's melee attack stripped the Plague Marine of all of his armour this turn anyway, and instead I disable his ranged weapon, which was definitely the better thing to do. I move Purgator Thul up, and unfortunately, well, not only is the Plague Marine out of line of fire, but Purgator Thul's weapon has run out of ammo. So, I go for the reload. I can't even set up Overwatch. The Chaos Marine gets a melee attack off since I've disabled his range weapon, and Apothecary Han gets a reaction attack on him as he tries to disengage from combat that should have killed him, but doesn't. I'll explain why in a second. Because it didn't kill him, he not only regenerates all of his health, with his final action he gets to heal himself. The reason that didn't kill the Plague Marine is because of a bug that existed in the game at the time, which has just been fixed, like literally a couple of days ago, and I'm reading directly from the patch notes here. Apothecaries. Resolved an issue where reaction strikes from apothecaries using spiky healy things in Terminator armor, the spiky healy things was my quote, not theirs, would deal zero damage. So that one wasn't on me. It's one of the few things in the course of this video that are not going to be on me, but hey, at least I also resisted the urge to expend more psychic power in finishing that Plague Marine off and thereby also advancing the warp meter completely unnecessarily. Speaking of the warp surge meter, remember in this mission it's going up 15% per turn. That's because there's just a one level of chaos corruption on this planet. With higher levels of Chaos Corruption, the Warp Meter advances faster. Later on in the game, I'm conducting a mission on a planet that has fallen to three ranks of Chaos Corruption, and the Warp Meter rises by 30% every turn. 15% per turn is quite manageable. Unless, like me in this mission, you spend so long dicking around getting your squad into position on a door ready to breach and attempt to take down the first of the two seed carriers in this mission, that it takes two full turns for you to actually stack up on the door and breach, at which point the warp meter has risen to 85%, guaranteeing a warp surge on the next turn at exactly the moment I chose to breach the door and engage the first of the two seed carriers. What I should have done was just wait outside the door and wait that warp surge out. But no, <laughs> because I am Jingles, and this was just the way I was doing things today. So, Apothecary Han is the first one to breach. I can get the Seed Carrier and one of his offos with this uh, Scourge ability, which is going to inflict a bleed on them. So they're going to continue to take damage and will probably end up dying from it. However, that was the use of a psychic ability, which has pushed the warp meter up to 95%, but honestly, it doesn't really make any difference at this point. I can go ham on all of my psychic abilities, and it's not going to make the slightest bit of difference. The warp meter can't go above 100%. For the rest of this turn, it doesn't really matter if I use any psychic abilities or not. Well, it does, it just isn't going to affect the warp meter. What I mean by that is triggering Purgator Fool's Aegis Shield and then moving him up to a firing position has expended all three of his action points. So the only thing that's achieved is put him into hard cover without the ability to actually shoot anything. You wouldn't believe I do this for a living, would you? <laughs> 
Justicar Iolanthus is in a good spot. That Chaos Cultist over there is the only one who can actually shoot at him. But it took me two action points to get there, which means I've only got one left, which means even if I buff this Storm Boulder attack with some psychic power, it's still not going to be enough to remove the threat to his flank. And then watch this. Because XCOM 2 has conditioned me to never leave your troops in the open and always move them into hard cover if available, I have moved them into the best cover available. It's so good, he's not only safe from all of them, they're all very, very safe from him. <laughs> And now it's their turn. Die, die, and here it comes. Die. So, suppressive fire. Not good news. What's next? What's this guy going to do? These two aren't bleeding, so they will die eventually. More suppressive fire. So, two of the three marines I have that are actually in a position to do something are now suppressed. One of them takes a reaction strike from... which didn't do any damage. There's that bug again. That zero damage reaction attack bug has now been patched, by the way, but at the time that was really annoying because that might have killed him. One of my purgators is now covered by Overwatch. Just a car Iolanthus, who failed to kill anybody when he breached the room, is now taking fire from multiple positions, and all of his armor's been depleted, which means he is in serious trouble. And then, just when you thought things couldn't possibly get any worse, because I breached the room when the warp meter was at 85% and it rises by 15% every turn with one level of corruption, there's the what should have been a completely predictable and manageable warp surge which has just generated reinforcements to my rear in one turn. Two of my marines are suppressed, one is completely exposed, which just leaves Purgator Tor here, and I'm going to need to pull up a minor miracle wizard. Fortunately, because he's using the silencer, I know it's a stupid weapon, he does have the disrupt shot. So he didn't actually need to kill that guy to remove his suppressive fire. And while I'd love to pull off the same trick on the second cultist, who's keeping my boys under suppressive fire, I don't have a lot of fire to do it, so I'll just have to content myself with killing one of them, covering the willpower point in the process, and taking some of the pressure of just a car on Atlantis. And the good Purgator still has one action point left. What can I do with that? Nope, can't hit anybody from here. Well, shit. I probably shouldn't, because it's going to advance the warp meter again, now up to 10%, but I'm going to pop his Aegis shield. Now then, since Apothecary Han is no longer suppressed, I can move him up to support just a car on Atlantis and give him a much, much needed heal. That's used all of his action points, of course. So now I have to decide what I'm going to do with Justicar Iolanthus. It seems to make sense to go for the cultist closest to him. The rend ability that I'm looking at here is a sort of area of effect close quarters melee attack, but he's not actually in close quarters with anybody yet. And here's where I screw up again. I can move him up to that cultist and still have two action points spared. Which means I could have just smacked him in the face twice with a halberd, which would have killed him but killed him without advancing the warp meter. Instead, I smacked him in the face with a force strike halberd attack, which did advance the warp meter. And it's left me with one cultist with a ranged weapon on my flank. On the other hand, it did leave me with a spare action point, which means that I can now actually use my stratagems for the first time. Well, I only have the one, it's the Quicksilver stratagem. Target a marine once per battle, gives them an extra two action points, which means Justicar Iolanthus now has exactly the number of action points that he needs to get up there on the flank and stick this halberd right through that cultist's head and kill him, eliminating the threat to the flank. In an attack that was apparently so vicious and brutal that Chaos Gate isn't allowed to show it to you on screen. Iolanthus still has one action point left, so we will move him up into cover. This leaves us Purgator Thul, who is suppressed and covered by Overwatch, so if he does anything other than trigger his Aegis shield and reload, he's going to take damage. However, with the Aegis shield up, he's able to ignore most of the damage that he was going to take. And he did have to spend a willpower point and use the Psychic Onslaught ability, advancing the Warp Surge meter to 40% in the process in order to take care of the guy who was pinned by Overwatch, but... Well, he's managed to... I mean, I think he's still suppressed. Um, 
No. No, he's no longer suppressed. That's good news. Oh. The seed carrier continues to bleed. The lone surviving cultist continues to shoot at just a car iron anthers. And I think it's about time for those reinforcements to arrive. Oh, and there's a patrol moving up. <laughs> Here come the reinforcements. Oh, that is that is not good. That's a pox walker. These are the guys that like to explode when you kill them in melee combat. They also like to resurrect dead pox walkers, in fact, dead anything around them, to fight as lesser pox walkers. I think it's high time I dealt with that seed carrier. I can't actually oh, shoot him from where is. Purgator Thule is. I can from here, but it's not going to kill him. But he's got enough action points, I could just shoot him again and that would kill him. Here is where I probably commit amongst the litany of errors and miscalculations that you've witnessed ready. this far. This is probably where I commit my single most egregious error of the entire mission. What I'm trying to do here is extract the seed from the seed carrier intact. When will you do that? I mean, later on, as you unlock various different items of equipment, you can actually do that much more easily than you can at this stage of the game. At this stage of the game, the way to do it is to kill the seed carrier with a melee critical, which is why I've reduced him to low enough health that the next melee is going to kill him. But it needs to be a melee critical, because crits in this game open up bonus options, and when you crit a seed carrier, one of the options is to extract the seed intact. And I have just a car Iolanthus standing right there with a hammer hand ability, which is a guaranteed crit. And instead, I rush one of the heavy weapons guys up to him, and smack him in the face with a heavy weapon, which kills him, but it doesn't extract the seed. I think it's safe to say that I'm not exactly covering myself in glory in this mission. I mean, I've completed the glorious deed, I've killed eight enemies with ranged weapons, but I'm doing it in the most ham-fisted way possible. Fortunately for your sanity, we are now approaching the half-hour mark in this video, which means I'm going to start to wind things up now, and we will be continuing the rest of this cluster of a mission in the next video, where you will be amazed based on my current performance as I blunder right into another patrol. <laughs> Just as the reinforcements are closing in from the rear, uh, you'll be amazed to hear that I managed to successfully actually complete this mission. Although for now, at least until the next video, you're just going to have to take my word for it. But it was definitely this mission that taught me, in the harshest way imaginable, that while Chaos Gate may look like XCOM 2, and it's certainly inspired by XCOM 2, it does not play like XCOM 2. I'm trying to play it like XCOM 2, but it will get you nowhere fast. In the meantime, I hope you've enjoyed the mission thus far. I hope you're all having a great weekend. And as always, be pure, be vigilant, behave.